So this, this is a workplace recycling station. It's very similar to what you'd find in your home, give or take. There's color coding, there's messages about what to put in and what not. Um, but as you'll hear through the example in this chapter, um, once you look under the lid, things get a little bit more complicated. Here, organic waste, very nice. We've put this in the right bin, except this nice little plastic ribbon shouldn't be in that bin. You can see there's some soft plastic in that. At the end of the day, the behaviour still isn't being performed. It's hard to know what the right thing to do is. And system thinking can help you understand some of the roots of the problem and also where some of the behaviour changes need to happen. Which is why we need to look at it through a systems thinking lens. It's taking a situation or a problem of interest and trying to understand it in terms of the constituent parts and relationships that create the behaviours and outcomes that you're interested in. It reminds you that actually there's a lot more going on. So if you do change something in the system over here, something over here might change. It's a very organic thing. Because a lot of the situations and problems of interest to policymakers tend to be uh, complex or, or wicked is a, a phrase people use. If your intervention fails, um, it might not be because the intervention isn't any good, but more that something else in the system isn't allowing it to be implemented. In chapter two, the example we used is waste management. So here we'll use another. So the problem we've got here is obesity. Obviously, um, on paper, people would argue is very, very simple. Uh, so obesity is a much more complex problem than what people might think. And when it comes to policymakers, what's often happened in the past is they've always tried to just sort of work with one area in the system where uh, we now know that actually we need to probably take a systems approach, but with behavioral interventions integrated into that approach. This is literally Stefan and I's uh, five minutes, if that, of just scribbling down of the causes and consequences that come from obesity. So already from this one simple thing that is energy out, energy in, uh, we've already got a lot on here. We know this is nowhere near what this systems map, if we had even uh, double the time, if not an hour or two hours of the time, this would be getting a lot more complex. Even though thinking like this makes your head hurt, there are real benefits for it, particularly in a behaviour change context. With systems thinking, you can have a much deeper conversation about, well, how do you pick that important behaviour? What might be some of the unintended consequences? Uh, and so on. So it really helps enrich that initial exploration phase of the method. At core, we've said systems thinking is about taking a situation that you're interested in or a problem and using a specific discipline process, translating it into an analytical approach. It really is important if you can get different people around the table and understand different perspectives on a problem, it means that you're going to get a much better idea of what needs to be done to try and help solve that problem. So another key term to take from the chapter is simplicity. Um, we often are looking for very simple, profound and effective approaches for behaviour change, but getting there takes some work and systems thinking can help you take, go through that process. Often with systems thinking, people think it is um, at odds with taking a behavioural approach, but actually if you think uh, use systems thinking in with a behavioural approach, it gives you a much, much bigger understanding of what can be done, what needs to be done. They can work really, really well together, which is why we advocate it as part of the Behaviour Works method. <laughs>